and we're basically pretty well peaked. We're at 19.9 or 20 amps going into the battery when over here we're only getting 10 amps. So it is a true MPPT charge controller. I actually really like the thing. In this video we're going to have a look at this MPPT 20 amp solar charge controller by Batteria Power. And they've also sent an accessory item that you can use along with this charge controller and it's basically an extension. This charger is Bluetooth as well which is quite unique. So we'll get connected and we'll see how that works out. They've got a quick start guide and then an instruction manual. You've got the charge controller. Nice, small, compact, portable I would say. Here's a look at the specs on the back of the solar charge controller. 12 volts or 24. Battery types are gel, AGM, and LifePo. 12 or 24 volt is auto. And then it goes through the specifications on the different charge modes. Here's some website information. I'll put uh, links in the description if you want to check out more information or you're considering maybe picking one of these up for yourself. These are SAE connectors on each side of the charge controller. It comes with two pigtails for making your own cords. You can connect these to the other wires, which is what I'm going to end up doing because I don't have anything that uses this particular type of connector. And then they have a polarity corrector that you can use. And as you can see, if you were to use that, that would reverse the polarity. So now we've got negative on the top and negative on the bottom over here. So you have to be real careful with these types of connectors and make sure that you have correct polarity in your wiring so you don't burn something up. And then it comes with a set of screws. So you could just set it down and use it mobily as, as it is. Or there's four holes in the corners where you could mount it to something if that's how you wanted to go about it. So I'm going to work on getting some wiring. I think one end on the uh, output side I'll connect to where I can put either alligator clips or ring terminals so I can connect to a battery. And then the other side I'm going to come out of this to uh, MC4 connectors so I can plug that into a solar panel and then I can plug that directly into the solar charge controller. This is the extension kit also provided by Battery of Power and they have several different kits available. And it looks to me like it's a real nice kit. Velcro strap to tie up the excess. I'll link this in the description along with the uh, charge controller in case you're interested in it. This uh, extension kit feels like real nice wire, nice and flexible. It does have printing on there, but it's real tough to read. It feels like it's probably uh, 14, maybe 12, maybe 12 gauge. I don't see anywhere that it says what gauge it is, but it also comes with the reverse polarity adapter just like the uh, solar charge controller comes with one as well. It's got some fancy little caps for the ends when you're not using it. Real nice extension kit. 10 foot extension so you can put your solar panels in the sun and put your charge controller and battery or whatever it is you're charging in the shade. All right, so I've taken the two pigtails that came with this battery, a 20 amp solar charge controller. I installed MC4 connectors on one of the pigtails and the other pigtail, I installed a couple of ring connectors and extended it a little bit so I can connect it to my battery. Now, ideally, you should have a inline fuse for both sides of the charge controller. I would recommend that anyway. Just for demonstration purposes, I do not have any inline fuses set up on this system that I'm showing you. This is Charge Pro 2.0 app, both on Android and iPhone. You can get that set up on your phone. So let me connect this positive to the battery up here, and that should power up the uh, charge controller. And as you can see, it did power up. It's got 25% increments, indication of charge power. Now I had played around with this a little bit before I turned the camera on and this is not accurate until we're starting to charge. It's showing 100% but this battery is about 45% full. So you can use this to set the parameters. So you can press it once and it scrolls through the different menus. There's temperature both Celsius and Fahrenheit. It's currently pretty warm out here. It's 91 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees Celsius in my garage. Press it again and you get the error code section and right now we have zero zero so there are no errors. 
and then 12.9 and it shows you amperage once you start to charge. Down here you've got the three different battery types that you can use this charge controller on, JL, AGM, or LifePo4. So this is a LifePo4, this is my SFK 280 amp hour LifePo4 battery, 12 volt. So to set that, real simple, just hold the button down and tell it the uh, indicator for the gel for the uh, battery type starts to blink once it starts to blink then just press it once to scroll across to the next selection and we're going to set it for life pull four and then hold the button down for four or five seconds and then it gives you the option to switch from 12 volt to 24 just by simply pressing it so this is a single battery, it's a 12 volt battery, so we'll go back to 12 volt and then hold. And you're set. We've got LifePo4 setting and we are uh, set up for the 12 volt system. 12 volt LFP battery. So we are set. Now that it's powered on, we should be able to find it on our app. Now they've got these labeled in purple letters and they're actually pretty difficult to read. You kind of got to get it set just right. So let me find it on here. Battery of power 20 amp. We'll connect and we'll go back to the home page and it's updated. So it's showing a voltage of 12.9 volts. And that's what we have here on the charge controller, 12.9 volts. Nothing coming in. It shows current, voltage, and power in watts. Gives you the controller temperature, 91.4 Fahrenheit or 33 Celsius. It has them both on the app here. System is normal. And then you've got uh, history. Today's running data, it gives you highest volts, lowest volts, charge amount, discharge amount, and max charge power. Then it has historical data we just turned it on so there really is no history there other than what we've just done by turning it on and it tells you what each colored line on the graph is for you've got this type of a graph as well if you like that total running days total charge amount total discharge amount so that's that's kinda handy and that's a neat feature then you can go in here with settings confirm to unlock settings let's unlock Okay, now it says unlocked. So you can change the voltage. Right now it's currently set up for boost voltage at 14.2 volts. So you can change that. I'm going to leave it all just as it came. So we'll just cancel. Looks like you can go down through here and change pretty much everything. Light control delay time. It's on 10 seconds right now. Light control voltage is 5 volts. System voltage, so you can select 12 or 24 volts. We'll leave it on 12. And then you can change your battery type based on what you have. We'll leave it on lithium. So you can make all those settings on the app as well as using the charge controller itself. So I'm going to uh, set this up. I just have my benchtop power supply here and I'm going to pump in simulated solar power and we'll just see how it does for charging this battery. I'm going to set the power supply like we have a 12 volt panel. Do not exceed the following. So for a 12 volt battery you can have 30 volts of input voltage and for a 24 volt battery you can have 60 volts for input voltage. It said, I believe it was 300 watts of 12 volt PV and then 600 watts for a 24 volt PV. All right, so I guess for a 12 volt panel, you would have this set for about 18 volts. Has to be higher than the battery voltage or no charge is gonna happen. So let's set it right at 18, 18.09, that's close enough. And we're putting 10 amps into the solar charge controller and now it's registering 13 volts on the battery and 12.6 amps going into the battery. So we're only putting 10 amps into it from the power supply, but we're getting 12 and a half amps out into the battery. And that's where the MPP really comes in handy. So we're getting two and a half amps of extra power just through the MPPT. So that's 12 and a half. Now we'll set this up like we have a 24 volt panel. 
I think we'll just go ahead and set the voltage max at 30 amps and then we'll see what we end up getting out of the charge controller if we had a 24 volt like say you had two 100 watt 12 volt panels in series all right we're set at 30 volts and 10 amps and now we're starting to show an increase so it kind of comes on slowly and builds up and it's the MPP tracking is trying to find the optimal setting to get the most out of the incoming power and we're basically pretty well peaked we're at 20.1 amps now 19.9 or 20 amps going into the battery when we're over here we're only getting 10 amps out of the power supply so the extra power is coming out of the extra voltage that's going into the charge controller so it is a true MPPT charge controller I actually really like the thing let's open up the app again here alright so voltage 28.4 volts coming in from the solar MPPT we're getting 20 amps it's fluctuating slightly but right at basically the limit of the charge controller 20 amps going into the battery 13.2 volts on the battery and that's 265 watts of power going into the battery and it's really nice to know that it is a true MPPT charge controller they're not just saying that I can feel a little bit of heat starting to form in the charge controller I wouldn't say it's excessive at all it's actually surprisingly kind of cool considering that it's maxed out just very very well there is a little bit of heat around the uh, SAE connector I'm not a huge fan that's one thing that I don't like is uh, is this type of connector they do work you gotta really pay attention make sure that you get your polarity correct when you're hooking them together and it comes with the reverse polarity adapter and that may or may not be necessary on the solar side depending on your solar panel setup and your connectors that you're using to connect to your solar panels but it comes with it so if you do have reverse polarity I, I, I think it said uh, yeah your error code list here 13 is solar reverse polarity if you get error 13 that's why you need to use that little adapter or reverse polarity piece on the solar side so that you get the polarity correct if you make your own adapters like I did you just be real careful and pay attention use a voltmeter or something as you're putting it together and make sure that you're putting the proper ends on the right wires and you should be okay still pumping away 19.9 20 amps into the battery 10 amps on the supply side and 30 volts alright let's see let's look at details here so the power coming in 272.9 watts 20.94 amps coming into the uh, SFK battery and this is showing 18 and a half now 19 and a half 20 20 so that's pretty accurate pretty close voltage 13.09 this is showing 13.2 on the uh, battery of power versus the SFK app and it's like I said it's warm in here so my temperature on the case in the battery is 107 in the inside on the BMS and 91 it's just 91 degrees in my garage here right now so the uh, battery of power shows the temperature at 118 that's actually showing you the temperature inside the charge controller I believe blinking light here is showing that it hasn't quite reached hundred percent I'm not sure what to really believe about this display because the battery the home page on this battery it's showing 45.2 percent on the battery uh, on the uh, SFK battery not quite 50 percent but this is showing between 75 and hundred percent so I don't know if that needs to cycle the battery a couple of times before it's accurate I'm not sure very cool charge controller the capability you know you could pack this up with a 200 watt portable solar panel or two small 100 watts and wire them in series and get 20 amps into your battery you could charge a 100 amp hour battery from uh, empty to full in about five hours at that rate and then what I really like as well is you've got all the information really that you need very cool I'll put links for this battery charger in the description 
keep an eye out and check it if you're interested in something like this because I see different prices on these types of items all the time. So catch it when they put it on sale. I think it's currently on sale. And pick one up for yourself if you like it. I actually really do like it. Check out the video on the screen now for my next solar video. And we'll see you over there.